in the workroom today with the Baltica, but I've decided to take a little break and because I'm just getting this channel up and running. Thought I'd take a couple of minutes and talk to you about models in general and what I think makes a great model. You know, a great model to me has two characteristics. First, a great model has to fulfill the purpose for which it was built. You know, there are several categories of model, of ocean liner model, and each one has a different purpose. And second, and I think most importantly, a truly great model cannot be built through the eyes of the model maker. A great model has to be built through the eyes of the intended viewer. A lot of people, if you ask them, would say it's a lot of detail, 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 detail that makes a great model. Well, for most categories, detail is a detriment to a model. Let's face it, models were not intended to be viewed through the macro lens of a camera. The magic of a model is that it gives you a perspective that you cannot get in real life unless you're flying overhead in a plane. It allows you to see the entire vessel. Think of the models made by Art Model Studios, the travel agency displays. They were fantastic. They accomplished their goal with a basic simplicity of form and a minimum of embellishment. And the fittings they did include, the bits, the bollards, the winches, they were placeholders. They used the same castings on almost every ship they made. It was just a suggestion because they knew their intended viewer. And it wasn't the shipyard worker who needed the detail of a builder's model, no. It was the traveler, it was the romantic, so they left a lot to the imagination. Take Dubelman's Rotterdam, the ship that I just finished restoring. Is she a highly detailed model? No, her details are simplified. But Dubelman did two things that really made that model a great model. First, they took great pains to replicate the characteristic of the ship that was most attractive to her intended viewer, her intended clientele. Yes, they were the travelers, but they were the voyagers, the people looking for new experiences, things that hadn't been seen before. And what did the Rotterdam have that fulfilled that desire? Well, the form of the ship herself. Dubelman modeled it to a T. Think of her uptakes, her radar mast, her tier decks. She was new, she was exciting. And that's one of the reasons the model was built in brass. They were going to build a large quantity of them, over 160, and wood would not have allowed that degree of accuracy. And you know, model making is always a compromise. Some things are left in, some things are left out. Dubelman chose to leave in one detail that I think really took the model over the top and made her click. When I tell you what it is, you'll probably laugh. It's her deck benches. They lined her rail with deck benches. And what did that do? It was brilliant. It humanized the model. It gave the viewer a point of reference, something recognizable where they could place themselves. It made her warm and inviting. And if you don't believe me, compare the Rotterdam to Dubelman's New Amsterdam. Same materials, same designers, same builders, same processes, but it's a cold model. You know, as I said, model making is a compromise. Some things are there, some things aren't. And it's usually deliberate. So the next time you see what you think is a great model, and like any other piece of art, you recognize one when you see one, take a step back, close your eyes, open them, and look again. Look for not only what's there, but what isn't there. Because in those choices is where you will find the artistry of a great model maker and the art of a fine model. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, please do. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. My name is Eric Matthew. <laughs> Time to get back to work. Take care.